Okay, you managed to play the video. Okay, so I'm recording the lecture now. Suffice to say, I always welcome you and and as I always mention that the fact that you have enrolled for FM is the beginning of confidence. It's the baseline of confidence. Um, it's a very easy subject, uh, but uh, it, it is predicated on this main to-do list. Number one, there's no substitute to question practice. Please get this right. There is no substitute to question practice. That's the first point. The second point is, as you are preparing for your March 2022 exams, can you allocate your time in such a manner that 70% of your study time is devoted to section C questions and 30% is devoted to other sections? As always, we don't do much during the revision sessions, but I'm here just to amplify your confidence by selecting a question paper. And you shall notice all the questions that we'll be doing as we revise are section C questions. It's on purpose. The purpose is to also allow you or to inspire you to mimic the same thing that you say is actually recommending. Okay, without taking much of your time, let me share my screen here. Allow me to share it right away. Uh, sorry, it's, I, I don't know what is happening. It's acting up. It's acting up. Okay. I am I'm now sharing my screen and I'm sure what you are seeing is my screen. Okay. Oh, well, allow me to close this because the way it's opening is not consistent with how I want it to open. Where is it? FM. Downloaded just now. FM, FM, FM. Where is it? Okay, we want to, to start, you know, we want to start mock by the 21st of mocks by the 21st of February, a latest. And for you to, to, to be confident in tackling mock questions, it's a function of you having attended these revision sessions and at least appreciating what is involved. This is the paper that I have sent, and excuse me for the font and style of the paper, you know. Now that our exams are computer-based, the, the paper that you come across here is of such nature that it's merely screenshots of the actual exam paper. So today we are going to do this paper. Next week we are going to do a paper on CBE. So that we are now we are now ready to go on the mocks because by then it will be the 19th. So that by the 21st we start doing mocks. And remember, these mocks are timed. These mocks are timed. So it's a matter of eating two beds with one stone. Time management as well as uh, practice on the curriculum content. Scenario one on September, December 2020, question paper. These papers are obtainable from my ACCA Global. I've just downloaded it now. Spine Company is looking to, ex to spend 15 million to expand its existing business. This expansion is expected to increase profit before interest and tax by 20%. Recent financial information relating to Spine Company can be summarized as follows. So this is the recent financial information. This is the current state profit before interest and tax, finance charges, profit before taxation, taxation and profit for the year. Spine company is not sure whether to finance this expansion using debt or equity. If debt is chosen, the company will issue 15 million 8% loan notes at their nominal value of 100 per loan note. If equity is chosen, the company will 
we have a 144 rice issue at 20% discount to the current market price of $6.25. Spine company has 12 million shares in issue and corporate tax is 30%. Mm -hmm. Then evaluate whether on financial grounds, Spine Company should finance the expansion with debt or equity 10 months. So you know that if you can if you can only answer this question, already you have it in the bag because it's out of 20. So if you can answer it like this, you get your 10 marks. It's out of 20, so it's it's already in the bag. I'm sure everyone is seeing my screen. Uh, it's it's always our visions, our visual schedules. See how you say like typing. Right, FM revision. FM revision. Okay, so. Sorry. Okay. Right. Then uh, it's September, December, September, December 2020. And it's question number 31. Remember section C, these are questions number 31, spine company. All these questions are in your Question bank. All these questions, they are in your question bank. Right. Uh, they are saying evaluate whether we should finance this with debt or with equity. So it's a matter of saying current, current, then we have got debt, debt and then we have got equity here. Yeah? You see that? So we, we want to see whether we should fi finance this with debt or equity. Now the question, the statement is saying, if the project itself, the expansion will increase profit before interest and tax by 20%. The expansion will increase profit before interest and tax by 20%. So all you have to do is to come here and say, Profit before interest and tax. So it is like, uh, you know, when I'm showing you how to summarize your workings, this is so profound because in your exam you may you may spend quite a lot. 1340. Yeah? So it's 13040. That's the current. It is going to increase by 20%. So it's a matter of 13040 times 1,2. Remember, that's how to increase by 20%. 13,040 times 1,2. So you say equals 13,040 multiplied by 1,2. So there you go. It's the, same, it's the same thing here on equity because whether, whether it is financed by debt or what, it's going to increase it by, um, by, 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 by that amount. Then it's profit before interest and tax. Then you say finance cost. Uh, finance. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes. When you're typing there, you put an extra four after the zero there. Well, when I was typing, zero. I put an extra four. Uh, you see oh, it. oh, I get it. I get it. You are right. You are right. You are right. So this clearly shows that we are together. All right. So take note on the presentation team. It is the presentation that matters. If you if you can't present it this way, you run. Even if I don't want you to present it normally the way it's done in the marketing scheme, because in most instances you won't finish. Then we have got finance cost, which is interest. What is the current? Our current interest is 240. So you can put it as minus 240. 240 like this. And then if you finance this with debt, interest is going to increase, right? 
because you are going to finance with 15 million loan notes at 8%. So interest is going to increase by interest is going to increase by 8% of 15 million. So it will be 240 plus 8% times 15M. Are you getting it? That's how it's going to increase. Should we finance it by debt? So it will be equals to 240 plus. So let's say equals minus 240 equals minus open bracket. 8% uh, times 15,000 plus 240. Right? So it's now minus fourteen forty. Coming. Uh, let us proceed. Let us proceed with where we were. So I, I, I expect you to have done some computations there. So we were now on on equity. If you finance using equity, there's no change to finance costs, so you still make two forty. And then you have got finance, you have got profit before interest and tax. Notice how you'll say is super smart when it comes to presentation. Clearly, you can see the examiner can follow through what I'm doing here, which is expected of you in the exam. Notice how the examiner can follow through. Now, uh, tax is it's 30%. So if you say 0.3, for example, times this, what you get? We want to, to verify the tax rate. Notice the current tax is 3840. You can see here, that's the current tax. So it's simply 30% of that figure. So you say taxation, taxation at 30%. So this one was profit, yeah, this one is profit before tax. Profit before profit before tax. So profit before tax equals minus, uh, equals, I mean taxation equals minus 0.3 here, multiply by that figure there. And then here equals minus 0.3, multiply by that figure there. Then there equals minus 0.3, multiply by that figure there. All right, so you have your tax figures there. Why is it here it appears? Okay, it's not the same. It's not the same at all. And then you have profit for the year. Profit after tax. Profit after tax. Um, <clears throat> profit after tax. Uh, so here, we are adding this up. And see it still here, if you can add that up. Profit after tax. There you go. And then here, profit after tax. There you go. <coughs> oh, sorry. So profit after tax. There you go. Now, uh, after you have done this, you need then to find, to say, now they are saying on financial grounds. So you can have your share price. Share price. What is the current share price? It's six dollars twenty-five actually. The current share price is six dollars twenty-five. The current share price is six dollars. Uh, let let us say number of shares. Let me say number of shares. Number of shares. If we have got the number of shares here, it's 12 million, which is 12,000. This is where I'm getting the 12 million here. Number of shares, 12 million. Then if we raise finance using debt, using rights issue, it will be equals 12 million plus, because it's, it's a one for four rights issue. So it's, it, it will be 12 million plus one over four multiply by 12 million because the shares will increase by those we are issuing for the rights issue so the number of shares they become equals 12 1 2 3 plus 
uh, plus three million. One over four of twelve is three million. So you can now work earnings per share. Earnings per share. Because we want to see if shareholders will gain as a result. Current earnings per share equals this divided by number of shares. Seventy-four. 74 cents, 75 cents equals this divided by uh, 12,000. You get 83 cents here. And here you get equals this divided by 15,000. You get 72 cents. Okay, so earnings per share will be like this. And then uh, They are saying if equity is chosen, the company will have 144 rise issue at a 10% discount to its current price. Then you say uh, sh current share price, current share price, current share price is $6.25. Here you have got $6.25. Now, whenever you make a rights issue, you need to calculate what is called the theoretical X right price. Theoretical, theoretical X right price. X right price. So what is the theoretical X right price? You know, if you make a one for four right issue, theoretical X right price, it's simply number of uh, value of shares before the right issue. Remember, it's one for four. So value of shares is four multiplied by six dollars twenty-five. That's value before the rights issue. Then you say plus proceeds from the rights issue. Rights issue are being issued at a discount of twenty percent to their current price. So current price is six dollars twenty-five. So the discount is how much? It's plus uh, six. 0.25 bracket 80%. And you divide all, all this by number of shares after the rights issue, which is four before the rights issue plus one rights issue. You divide by this. So what do you get? As the theoretical X right price. So if I open my bracket here, I simply say equals Four multiplied by six dollars twenty five plus a zero comma eight times six dollars twenty five close bracket divide all this by five. So theoretical X right uh, plus zero comma eight four times oh I was supposed to open a bracket here like this. So theoretical X right price is six. So if we issue rights issue shares, theory, current share price is six dollars twenty-five here. If you if we issue rights issue shares, shares are going to decrease by twenty-five cents to six. So that's that that's on financial analysis. So what you then have to do is to comment. 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 You would simply say when you are commenting, you can't comment verbatim, but you comment like this to say to say based on the current performance levels, based on current current performance performance levels, you know, or based on current performance levels of or current performance metrics, for example. You do notice that debt offer, debt offer will increase earnings per share, EPS two. Debt offer will increase EPS to three cents per share, zero comma eighty three cents. From up from seventy to seventy five cents, zero comma seventy five cents. Compared to compared compared to 
uh, equity equity issue which actually actually decreases yes, to 70 0, 0,72 cents you get that so also comma also comma uh, the theoretical x rate price the theoretical the theoretical theoretical x rights price falls to theoretical x rights price falls to six dollars from six dollars twenty five per share six dollars twenty five per share per share representing representing loss in value loss in value following following the rights issue loss in value let's say loss in shareholder value shareholder value follow uh, lo loss in shareholder value following the rights issue so you can you can follow through with with your say it falls to oh okay so we say that the theoretical x rights price falls to six dollars as compared to to, to six dollars twenty five <clears throat> therefore therefore comma the above computations the above computations computations favor financing expansion financing expansion using financing expansion using debt debt issue debt issue the final decision debt issue however debt issue however brings increased an increased gearing risk to the firm gearing risk to the firm to the firm to the firm uh, it increased it in gearing risk to the firm to the firm which management must consider management must consider you must also in other words management should take into account the, the fact that gearing risk is going to be amplified if we finance this expansion with debt if we finance this expansion with debt you get that uh, now there are various ways you can you can work you can work out this uh, you may say say it appears you have just worked earnings per share and you have just calculated earnings per share and that was it uh, what which other thing do we have to calculate which other thing do we have to calculate uh, you may calculate there are plenty of metrics that you can calculate here you can calculate price to earnings ratio you can calculate other 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 material other other stuff here but it doesn't mean you have to calculate everything like you can say pe ratio remember pe ratio is simply it's simply pr price over earnings per share so it's six dollars 25 divided by 7.25 which is eight dollars thirty seven there it becomes six dollars uh, pe six dollars divided by you use theoretical x divided by zero comma seven two you get zero comma eight thirty four all these are some of the ratios that you can calculate but clearly uh, you can't calculate everything i would i would want you to end your computations on theoretical x rights uh, price the theoretical x rights price I would want you to end your computations on that. 
So you can see here, that's how you calculate. So suffice to say, K should be taken on how you present your work. It saves a lot of time. Let me, let me, for interest's sake, open the marking scheme for you. I'm just, I just want to open the marking scheme for you to, for me, to actually show you that this is, this is, this is so, so important in terms of presentation. Notice, if you have, if you had, if you had gone through it by the way the examiner has done it, where is the marking scheme? Here it is. Notice how the examiner would actually Notice this is a typed this is typed material, mind you. Notice notice if 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 the market scheme can type this close to two pages like this, they are still typing. They are still typing. They are still typing. So oh not not up to up to here. Comment is just a single paragraph, which is fine. So financing by date is recommended, of course. We we reach the same conclusion, All right? But what, notice how this particular working in this particular presentation, you will not finish the exam on time. That's where you run the risk of saying, say, uh, you know, what what what? I I couldn't finish the exam, but I was left with ten mark question from section C, all that kind of stuff. It's because of presentation. So I know you have all these marking schemes, but I don't want you necessarily to follow through this. I want something like this. This you can quickly get to through to the question and move on to the next. Notice the only limited space that we have used. Just notice, notice. Just, just very few and we are done. So talk to me. Just to type whether you are understanding. If if I have got understanding ears here or listening ears, type and say say I I have noted that. Can you type in the chat? I need I need people to follow through what I'm saying because I have issues where when you are reading the marking scheme you don't change. I don't know why. Yes, I can see quite a lot of people typing. So this is pretty cool. This is this is very very cool. Okay, so we are in agreement on that one. All right, and then question B. Remember this, this was 20 mark question. Question B says, explain and discuss the relationship between systematic and unsystematic risk, five marks. Systematic and unsystematic risk. So it's a matter of explain. When we are when we are told to explain, it's an element of defining. So what you do is you write systematic and unsystematic and systematic uh, risk together. These are these these questions test your technical knowledge, understanding of your technical content. What are the differences between systematic and unsystematic risk? So it's a matter of defining. You say systematic risk, systematic risk, uh, systematic risk is a risk which cannot be reduced. Is a risk which can not be reduced by diversifying by diversifying securities in a portfolio. You know that? That's systematic risk. It is also known as market risk. It is also known as market risk. So that's systematic risk. You can't, you cannot change. Neither can you diversify it, neither can you reduce it by diversifying securities in a portfolio. And systematic risk on the other end, and systematic risk on the other end, on the other end is risk which is diversifiable, 
which is, is a risk uh, which can be reduced, can be reduced, uh, can be reduced by diversifying, diversifying securities portfolio. portfolio. That is what? Unsystematic risk. You can reduce it by diversifying securities in a portfolio. It is also known as di diversifiable risk. Thus, thus, it can be referred to referred to as industry specific, industry specific, industry specific or firm specific risk. Like this, oh, you, you you are getting it. So that's how you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be proceeding and say portfolio theory, portfolio, portfolio, portfolio theory suggests that, suggests that a, in a perfectly competitive market, in a perfectly competitive market, competitive market, comma, invest to hold investors are able to hold a well diversified portfolio eliminates unsystematic risk and system Matic risk and only face systematic risk. Systematic risk. You get that? You score your five marks. So the reason is, to, you know what? I had the choice of just saying these things without typing. But my issue is, if I do that, you become reluctant when it comes to typing. I don't know what happens to you students. When you are practicing questions, you are reluctant to type. And it doesn't even, it doesn't even surprise you that your say doesn't have an exam, but I typed. Even if you look at what I was doing in the morning, notice this was another subject. It's me who was typing all along. Look, just look at this. I was typing throughout like this. But I don't have any exam at the end. And also notice I have a choice of just dictating without typing. But why is it I'm typing? I want you to get that inspiration that you, the earlier you get hands on, you get a proper handle on this subject, the better, especially the discursive parts of the subject. Then, what are the uh, limitations of capital asset pricing model? Discuss the assumptions of the capital asset pricing model. So you come here and say assumptions of the CAPAM. It's, it's that part C of the question. Assumptions of capital asset pricing model. Capital asset pricing model. The question says discuss, so it's a matter of stating something and discuss it, like it assumes perfect markets. Perfect markets. You know, capital asset pricing model assumes pay perfect markets. So you're simply saying the model assumes perfect capital markets, perfect capital markets, capital markets, which information is symmetrical, information is shared equally, is shared equally amongst investors, amongst investors. However, however, comma, 
most capital markets are not perfect. Most capital markets are not perfect. Are not perfect. And the model and the model might be unrealistic. And the model might be unrealistic. Unrealistic. Another is another limitation of capital markets is that lending and borrowing. Lending and borrowing. So it's like the model assumes that investors can borrow or lend money at a risk free rate. The model, the model assumes that investors can borrow or lend money or lend money money at risk free rate risk free rate the risk premium is ignored the risk premium is ignored the risk premium is ignored on the assumption on the, the assumption on the assumption that that investors are able to diversify away and systematic risk investors are able to diversify diversify away and systematic risk and only face systematic uh, risk you get that 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 this is the this is the reasoning you 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 are you you can you can you can diversify away and systematic risk so in other words it is you can leave it as a separate assumption which says investors are able to hold a diversified portfolio investors are able to hold diversified diversified portfolio that's the assumption of capital asset pricing model so so in in so doing in so doing in so doing comma they only they only face systematic systematic risk However, however, not all investors, not all investors, not all investors can pursue active investment strategies, active investment strategies, which eliminate eliminate and systematic risk and systematic risk so this is the assumption that you can pursue what we call it it assumes that you if you are in a market you are able to reduce every risk which can be reduced which is called unsystematic risk that's 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 but it's but but you know it's not possible not all investors are skilled enough to eliminate any risk which can be eliminated no and only leave systematic risk it's not possible so that 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 assumption is 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 also skewed then there's another assumption which is like a single period horizon single period horizon in other words when you are using system capam we are simply saying investment and retains they are expected to okay in the same period there are one period it's, it's like a holding period return you invest in this year and you expect a return in this year it doesn't the model is not really based on multi-period investment horizons where you invest now and you expect it a return in 2025 ah no the capital asset pricing model is not based on that now, if you if you don't if you have forgotten all these, please read the notes on cost of capital. 
That's where we, we actually outlined the assumptions on dividend growth model, the assumptions on capital asset pricing model. They are well explained in that video. Please take that down. Suppose you have forgotten the mechanics underpinning these models. Uh, continuing with, with the questions. Crockett, so this is the second question. You know, after doing this question, I want, nobody's going home, I want to give you a question which, which you do the, as a group online whilst I'm listening. Six investment projects are being considered with the following details. Project outlay and net present value. So you can see here that all, all NPVs have already been calculated, but they are saying for B it's not yet known. Project B is expected to generate annual cash flows. So those are the cash flows expected to be generated by, by project B. In uh, additional information on, pro so on project B, or what we can agree is initial outlay is 1,500. That we can agree. And these are the sales and income figures. Now, project B is those are before say allowing for inflation of four percent per year for sales income and five percent per year for cost. Cro Crockett company is a nominal cost of capital of ten percent due to management reluctance to raise new finance. Capital for the investment of the above projects is five million. So all of these, they only have five million to invest. Projects A, B, and D and F are all independent, but C and E are mutually exclusive, you know, by, by definition, it means they can't be concurrently undertaken. You have to choose one, and once you choose one, it automatically excludes the other. All the above projects are divisible, and none can be delayed or repeated. All right, so this is investment. Oh, so this one was investment decision one. So it has got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of these. Investment decision number two is saying, a number of Crockett's employees have a company car. The entire company car fleet is now due for renewal. And in the past, it has been replaced every four years. Management are not sure if this is the optimum length of time and feel that the fleet replacement cycle, such as every three or five years, should be considered. That's what they are considering as point number two. It's called asset replacement decisions. And we have this also in our foregoing videos, in our supplementary videos. Invest number three says management of Crockett are considering the financial viability of another project, but as yet no detailed financial information is available to perform NPV appraisal. One of the reasons for this is that various cash flows will be subject to a number of different rates of inflation and are very uncertain at present. For example, the selling price inflation is no more than 2% per year, whereas the material cost inflation could be anything from 4 to 6% per year. The general rate of inflation is expected to differ from this. Management are not sure whether the appraisal could be performed by simply ignoring inflation altogether. Note, the 5 million capital investment outlined in, outlined in project decision one applies to that investment only and not to investment decisions two and three. Okay, so required. For investment one, calculate the net present value for project B, 4 marks. So when you are given 4 marks, please take it easy with yourself. Don't overdo it. So you say NPV for project D. NPV for project B. We are already given the cash flows. We are already given the cash flow. So it's like here, uh, you, you remember to be neat, zero. Uh, one, two, three, four. Are we given four year term, four year horizon? I think so. Yeah, zero, one, two, three, four. Yes. And then we are given, we, we then say sales, sales. Yeah, you put sales. There you put costs. Now, sales, they need to be inflated. Remember, we are being told that sell, selling price inflation is 4%. So what you have to do is to inflate these by 4%. So you simply say sales, then you say inflated at, inflated at 
You take it easy with yourself. Remember, you're just chasing four marks. Costs are inflated at 5%. for sales and for costs. So costs are inflated at 5%. So we put a dash and simply say inflated at 5%. So there you go. And then you say initial cost, initial cost. Uh, initial cost is what is given in the project detail above, which is they need 1,500,000 so initial cost is minus 1,500 for B. Now, sales and stuff, you start from year one. So it's 7, 25, 7, 6, 5, 8, 8, 5. So it's a matter of saying equals 7, 25 times 1, 4 to the power of this. So always raise it to the power. You remember to raise to the power is so important. So in year two, you are taking six, seven, six, five, you raise to the power. So it's seven, six, five here, you put six. In year three, it's eight, eight, five. Make sure you raise to the power, eight, eight, five. In year four, it's, oh, sorry, is, is it eight, eight, five? No, I screwed it there, I have to put it eight, eight, five. And then in year four, it's what, six, 12? Notice how super fast your say is. I'm not confused in the exam. I'm not acting as, as if I don't have my life to take care of. But remember, these things are your life at the end. So the way you do it should reflect just that. Don't work it as if it's someone's life which you are talking about. So, and then cost is 5%, 145 for the first year. You put it as minus. You say equals minus 145 times one comma zero five to the power you know to the power it's shift six so it's to the power one for year one and then you drag so that it it, it multiplies but then you have to change the figures 168 in year two you come here and make it 168 in year two 168 and then in year three you do it like that you say 202 and the other one is 94 so in year three, year is 202. Notice how energetic your say is. I'm not doing it as if I, I'm totally confused. I'm doing it as if I know that I'm here to make my life easy and to get this subject in the bag and move the hell out of this level to the next level. Here, having done this, you then have to find net cash flows, net cash flows, net cash flows. Right, in net cash flows, it's a matter of adding this up and tally it up like that, enter. And then make sure you are robust with your Excel skills. Uh, observe your, uh, your decimal notation. And then I told you how then you calculate NPV. You still remember? Melvin, tell me how I, I said we calculate NPV at 10%. Uh, I'm waiting to... to Okay, so you say equals yes NPV NPV yes. You open your brackets yes. You highlight year one to year four. No, you start by putting ten percent. Oh, ten percent comma. Then, sorry. Then you yes. highlight year one to year four. Sorry. Year one to year four. Yes. You close, you close brackets. Then brackets, plus, yes. plus year zero. That's the initial outlay. The reason being, initial outlay is negative, so we have to add it. So our NPV is 561 for project uh, for project B. I have my marking scheme with me, so it's a matter of checking. Uh, let me check what they got as the answer here. NPV for project B. Oh, where the heck it is. Oh, let me come back. Yeah, 561, you get it here. But notice how they have done it. Oh, perfect. Are you not seeing? They've just said inflated it, inflated. That's why, that's all you have to do. But this line here, it's, it's, it's taking us, it's unnecessary at your level, this line here. 
we don't need it because it takes a lot of time for you to to wrap it up so follow what i have said here don't even go to the tables sort out the mess like this even if the question had said ir or you were going to say it's ir equals and then you come to the next box and say equals irr open bracket you I, for irr you highlight everything from year zero to the final year and close bracket and press enter so irr for the project you give come out as 26 percent you know, I'm a bit pacey and I'm doing it on papers because when it comes to EFA, F, FM, if I don't do it, you guys will not finish the exam. So if I do it a bit pacey, a bit pacey, even if when you are revising, you need to tell yourself to say, look, it appears I'm missing, I'm missing something here. Given the capital constraint, calculate optimum investment combination that and the resultant NPV. Okay, so when, when, when you are facing this, that you say, you say B, question is question what? Question is actually A2, A2. All you say is um, to get, to get optimum NPV, to get optimum project mix, optimum, optimum, meaning best combination, to get optimum project mix, comma, it's important, it's important first to first rank projects, rank projects using profitability index. That's what you do first, rank these projects using profitability index. So uh, let us do it. You say project, project, then you say NPV, and PV, you say cost, cost by cost, we mean initial outlay or which we call investment. And then you then say profitability index, PI equals co, uh, NPV over cost. It's actually NPV over cost and then PI ranking. Let us rank this thing up. Okay, so your projects, you, you delineate them as they are A, B, C, D, E, F, I don't know. Are they getting to G? Check if they are getting to G or not. So what I want you to do is, please, can someone shout these figures for me? Mel Melvin, if you can see these figures, can you let me know whilst I'm here? I'm still on the in, in, initial investment column. Can you say them out for me? Investment? Okay, I uh, will shout them out for you, sir. Uh, so, A, it's 1,000. Yes. Uh, 1,500. 1,000, yes. 750. Yes. 1,125. 1,850. And 1,300. Yes. yes, like this. And then, still Melvin, Come on, go again on under on, on NPV column. Uh, it's 390. 390. Uh, yes. That one will be 561. I think the one we just worked out. Yes. 325. 325, yes. 590. 590, yes. 840. 840, yes. 635. Pardon? 635. 35 thanks and then npv i mean pi is a matter of saying this over the make sure you understand what what is the numerator for the pi computation it's not cost over npv but it's npv over cost now melvin is shouting these figures for me because it's a screenshot of the actual exam in the actual exam this this was an excel thing so because it was an excel thing you copy it was a matter of copying it and pasting it on your excel response option it's not like you'll be coming back seeing them and you know how they open they open side by side such that you do you won't even need to worry notice it actually opens side by side like this so it's not like you if that's how it opens in the exam it will be side by side like this 
but because they took a screenshot, it would appear as if you were supposed to do this routine thing of coming back again and doing all these. Perhaps you may say, say, this may end up confusing me. I agree with you. This is merely a screenshot. Now, PI ranking, for before you rank for PI, you need to understand what is written concerning these projects. They are saying projects C and E are mutually exclusive, meaning once you pick C, exclude E. Once you pick E, ex exclude C. So it's like this. The one with highest is project D. So you, you say this is first. Followed by project F second. Followed by project E third. Once you pick E, you automatically exclude C. So you say mutually excluded by E. Automatically excluded, so it's no longer there. And then A becomes fourth. And lastly, uh, uh, this one becomes fifth. This, this becomes and very easy. So you then say maximum NPV achievable. Maximum NPV achievable. I'm about to wrap it up and I want to give you a question that you then have to do. And no, you are going to complete that question in class. I want to, to gauge on your time management skills. Otherwise, uh, it may not work out right for me. PI ranking. So PI ranking, there you have it. Uh, PI ranking, and then you have got cost, and then you have got NPV here. So it's a matter of saying first, second, third, fourth, fifth. We have got 50, five of them. And then the one with 50, it's actually I omitted a line. It should read PI ranking, and then it, it should say project to make some sense. So that if I say which one is first, I would say D. And D is a cost of 11.25 and NPV of 5.90, 5.90. But before I proceed with this, I should ensure that I'm told that my maximum finance is 5 million. So it would make sense if I put my 5 million here because this is the maximum money that I have. So I can say, I can, I can code it by saying finance available, available like this. And then I follow the same procedure. F is second. It is a it is a cost of one three hundred, and an NPV of six thirty five. Okay, I'm checking if I'm I'm yet to exceed my money, and I'm still remembering that my money is still there. Then E is the is the other one. It is a cost of um, eighteen fifty, and it's got NPV of eighteen forty. Notice how you say is 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 doing it. I, I'm going to. I'm only going to give you 20. I'm only going to give you 36 minutes to finish the question I'm going to give you. So the the fourth one is a 1,039. So you check. Yeah, and we exceeded the five million. Oh, it appears we are about to exceed 5 million. So what is required now is the balance. So you say equals, equals this one minus sum. This one minus sum of this. Make sure you, you are also spot on with your Excel skills, guys. So on A, we needed only 1,000, but now amount which is available is 725. So because the amount which is available is 725, it means you are not going to earn the NPV that you wanted. Remember, you wanted 390 if you had invested 1,000. But now that you are only left with 725, you are no longer going to earn 390. You, you apportion it because it's now less, you are going to earn less. So you say equals 725 over the amount you needed, 1,000 multiplied by 390. So this becomes your NPV achievable.
under the capital rationing situation that we have, 2347. You have your marking scheme here, you can check. You know, the, make, the marking scheme helps you to check. The maximum NPV achievable is 2347. It's 2348 because of rounding off. If you if you round it up, it's it 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 you can see it's exact 2348. If you make sure that you observe the commas here. 2348. Okay. Sorry. If you put to the nearest whole number is 2348. But even if it was 2347, you still get the, the full credit because it's still fine. So already on this paper, you, you have 10 marks already. You know you have passed this section C already way from up to what we have done. Then for investment to explain approach croquet should determine, should use to determine optimum replacement cycle for the fleet of car. All right. Determination of optimum replacement cycle. What do, how do we determine optimum replacement cycle for the fleet of cars? Optimum cycle. Tell me, guys, how do we determine optimum replacement cycle for a fleet of cars? Talk to me. EAC. Perfect. Perfect, Melvin. Remember, it's EAC, but there's four marks. Can you unmute and educate yourself a little, a little bit? You are correct. Okay, we are yes. now working with four marks. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. So your, uh, you use your equivalent annual cost, uh, whereby you basically divide the, I think it's the MPV divided by the annuity factor, if I'm not wrong, of, of, of for the project life, I think. Yes. But because remember today, today I'm teaching you to type. So I want you to type in such a manner that the examiner knows. So you say when, when FM is determining is determining uh, determining an optimum replacement cycle optimum replacement cycle for its fleet of cars its fleet of cars comma comma there is need there is need Determine to come up with to first come up with to first come up with the relevant relevant cost relevant cost for each for each cycle relevant cost for each cycle then. of capital company's cost of capital of capital comma NPV of cost of these net cash flows net cash flows on each cycle on each cycle need to be computed uh, for comparison purposes, for comparison purposes, comparison purposes, comma, NPVs are not are, are not are not used as basis for decision for decision. Rather, rather, we calculate. We calculate equivalent equivalent annual cost on each cycle on each cycle. So you can simply say EAC equals 
NPV per cycle, per cycle divided by a unit factor on the cycle, a unit factor on the cycle. So this is equivalent annual cost. It's NPV per cycle. You divide that by a new factor per cycle. All right. Using EACs, using EACs, comma, the cycle, the cycle with the lowest EAC OST EAC is then chosen. So Melvin, I want you to tell me if if you had marked the, the answer you had written, how many marks out of four were you going to give yourself? <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't good enough because I just uh, maybe half a mark. <laughs> good. Oh, Thanks mark. for that. So 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 thank you so much. So you are not seeing I have actually written what you have told me. But you are saying, say, if you had written the way I had said it, it was going to be just half a mark. So that's correct. You, you, you can see, you, you don't start by saying NPV over. You start by saying, how do we even come up with NPV in the first place? And for us to get NPV, which cost of capital do we use? And what is the reason actually for calculating EAC is for comparison purposes because NPVs cannot be compared over different time horizons. All right, uh, so already I am now on my 14 mark category. You know, as you say, when I'm answering this, I, I make sure I don't lose a mark. I know my examiners very well and I have to head butt them. You know, it's an element of head butting, serious head butting. Right from the beginning, they should know the bastard they are dealing with. That oh, this person is going to hate butters like nobody's business. I, I, I am just programmed not to lose a mark because of my inability to type. No wonder why I like typing too much. And I want you to to get this right into your head. Be super proficient when it comes to typing. Now, in relation to investment decision three, describe two approaches for dealing with inflation and provide a recent recommendation as to which approach croquet management should take. You know, they are, they are, they are, they are saying, describe two approaches for dealing with inflation. Now, when you are dealing with inflation, dealing with inflation, there are two approaches that you use. Approach one, that's the last, the last question now. Approach one, you use what is called a real approach, a real approach. What is a real approach you describe now? With this approach, with this approach, comma, cash flows from a project, cash flows from the project are not inflated cash flow from the project are not inflated. Rather, they are used, they are used based on current prices. Current prices. Current prices. I say. We are saying with this approach, cash flows from the project are not inflated, but rather they are based on current prices. Also, comma, such cash flows, such cash flows, uh, such cash flows, such cash flows are discounted, are discounted using a real discount rate. A real discount. They are discounted using the real discount rate. What is this discount rate which ignores inflation? They are discounted using the real discount rate. This approach, this approach is, is ideal in a stable environment. 
It's ideal in a stable environment. Full stop. However, however, comma, project cash flows are marred by uncertainties arising from inflation. Uncertainties as a result of inflation. In inflation and the real approach might, might not be realistic. The real approach might not be ideal. That's the, that's the real approach. And then we do have what is called nominal approach, approach to nominal approach. Now you understand all these things, that nominal approach is where you inflate and, and you, you discount using nominal discount rate. You get that? So I'm no longer going to type long sentences. I'm simply saying nominal approach, you inflate cash flows. Inflate cash flows. Inflate cash flows with specific inflation rates. Specific inflation rates. So, e.g., sales using selling price inflation. Selling price inflation and so forth. So if it's variable cost, you use variable cost inflation, etc. Then discount, discount cash flows using nominal discount rates, discount rates. Now, if this is not given, if this is not given, comma, it can be estimated using, if, if the nominal discount rate is not given, it can be estimated using the Fisher equation. You remember? Fisher equation. How, how, is, how does the Fisher equation work? One plus I, one plus I equals one plus R, one plus R, bracket, bracket, one plus, H, where H is the general inflation rate, general inflation rate, inflation rate, and R is the real rate, is the real cost of capital, is the real cost of capital. You know, this was an easy thing. Now, Melvin, uh, uh, I mean, simplicious, at the insight, uh, I'm saying at a insight, suppose you are reading that question for the first time, yet you noted that it was, this is how easy the answer was. Um, not really, <laughs> because initially I thought there was going to be some calculations. You know, notice how the, our examiners, this is how examiners, they know, you know, examiners, they know how you know, the, you, they know that you know this. To say, if the examiner just said, what is the difference between a real and the nominal cash flows? The examiner knows that it was going to be right away, you were going right away to hit it on the mark. Acknowledging that, the, exa the examiners acknowledging that you know that, they weighed it in such a manner that immediately after the exam war, you begin to know it, but in the exam, for whatever reason, you go blank. No wonder why we encourage question practice. So please take note, what are the purposes of these revision sessions? I need to repeat, the purposes of these revision sessions are not necessarily, it's not necessarily to, I know you are revising, but I know the missing link. As you are revising, you are not equipping yourself with typing to the extent required by the examiner and time management. No wonder why I do this with you, to, to, to plug that gap. So this, this, this session, I'm going to stream it. Don't worry, I will stream it and I will share it on the, 
we share it uh, with on the on, on the group perhaps or around Tuesday or Wednesday. But I want you to do a question whilst to add to, to, to let me know that what I'm just saying is being uh, noted. If if you if you allow me to, you know, I do have quite a lot of things to discuss with you, quite a lot. Revision packages. Notice this revision package I, I, I came up with on the 3rd of February. So the whole package should be completed this, this February. This whole package. So what, how I'm going to do it is I'm looking, I'm taking a look at the questions and see. Oh, if this question, if I do this question, it means I've covered, I've covered what was required in that paper, I've covered what was required in that paper, and so forth. This is the approach that I'm taking. Remember, our, our lesson runs through to five. It runs through to five, so we have got one hour or 30 minutes. And if I can have a, if I can have a 70, Two minute question. So this is 72 minutes, which is one hour, 12 minutes. 36 minutes on each question because 20 marks should be 36 minutes. And I I, I expect I expect you to I expect you to send me the questions right away after one hour after one hour, 12 minutes. Let me not take much of your time. Let me send it. Let me send it. Let me send it. You have one hour, 12 minutes to complete this question. You have, you have one hour, 12 minutes. Answer. Answer the question paper below. Question paper below. Submit it. Submit it to my Skype, to my WhatsApp inbox by 5 p.m. sharp. To my WhatsApp inbox. My WhatsApp inbox by 5 p.m. sharp. So you so that's what you have here. You have seven, you have seventy. You do have uh, which paper was it? Uh, September, December, twenty seventeen. Okay, let me attach it. Please maintain the momentum. Don't throw the momentum off. Otherwise, we are no longer doing business as business. We we are now. You can see you say is in a business mode. I'm taking no prisoners, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm making sure that in the exam, I don't lose marks unnecessarily. So can you do this? Submit to my WhatsApp inbox by 5 p.m. sharp individually. Oh, OK. Notice, notice, guys. You, we may not do it individually. We can do it as a group. It is still fine. We can do it as a group. At least it, it's actually doing it as a group. It motivates. Who wants to share the screen? If we do it as a group like this, who wants to share the screen? That will motivate your colleagues. Who wants to? Because we need one person to be typing. If you are doing it as a group, who wants to be sharing the screen? We need one person typing and everyone contributing. I will, not, I will not interfere. I just want to know if you can express what you know within time limits, because this is so important for the exam. Who wants to share the group? The, 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 who wants to share the screen? The person who shares the screen must have good internet. Patience, can you share the screen? Melvin, can you? I uh, say I don't mind sharing my screen. It's just that my internet is a bit unsteady, but uh, we can try and share mine. I don't mind, but yeah, my internet is yes. just a bit unsteady today. I hope it will it'll be fine. Yes. When you are sharing the screen, it means you are the one who you, who will be typing. Uh, uh, I can type. Oh, Tafazga is saying I can type. 
So Taf Tafazgo, I was so Tafazgo said she can. So Tafazgo can share the screen. Tafazgo, it's, it's okay. You can share the screen. It's fine. Uh, it's okay, Melvin. Thanks, but let Taf because she had volunteered whilst I was asking, allow her to share. So yeah, she think... will be typing. She will be typing and sharing the screen, and you guys, you be, you be, uh, contributing. So it's, it's fine, guys. Let me terminate the recording now. I'm not leaving the Skype. I'm just terminating 